Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Today we're checking out what's new in Logic Pro 10.4, which just came out a few days ago. Just a real quick side note, I'm pretty sure you have to have OS X Sierra or High Sierra for this to work. I wasn't able to install it on my El Capitan machine, so if you're having trouble uh, installing it, that's probably the reason why. Logic 10.4 has a whole bunch of new features, new plugins, and new instruments. So let's get right into this and check these out. So the first new feature I want to show is Smart Tempo. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to record guitar over this MIDI arrangement I have here. And this keep mode up here shows that we are just going to keep the session tempo of 146 BPM. The point of Smart Tempo is to be able to import audio or record audio without a click and then have the session adapt the natural ebb and flow of the tempo of your recording. So with Smart Tempo, you can change this mode to adapt. And when I play in guitar, it'll adopt the natural tempo of my guitar recording, no matter how slow or fast I play. So this allows me to just play the guitar part naturally the way it feels most comfortable without a click. After recording, you can choose to show the downbeat and tempo information in the new file tempo editor. This allows you to go in and adjust the tempo analysis if for some reason it wasn't interpreted correctly. In the tempo global track, you'll see the tempo analysis for the guitar recording, kind of like how beat mapping works, but this works automatically, so this is a really cool new feature. Looks like I'm hovering around 146 to 149 BPM. Next what I'll do is just trim up the audio and make sure the guitar part is starting and ending on a downbeat on the grid, and the tempo analysis will follow the audio when I move it. I'll also make sure that my MIDI arrangement starts on the same downbeat, and the MIDI will automatically sync its playback to the global tempo changes. If you repeat or loop the audio recording with the adapt mode still on, the tempo changes will be copied along with it. Let's give this a listen with my drummer instrument and make sure the beat syncs up to the guitar. Perfect. All MIDI notes and quantization data will sync up to the smart tempo analysis. Let's add the bass in this time. All right, next I want to get into some new instruments in Logic 10.4. The first I want to show you is the Studio Horns plugin, which is an awesome complex sampled horn instrument that lets you choose single horns or an entire horn section. Let's play around with the trumpet. These horns are incredibly realistic due to the several articulation settings you have to work with. Let's try another articulation like staccato. You can also choose an entire horn section and turn on the auto voice split mode so you don't hear your berry sax in the first trumpet range, for example. Studio Strings is another new instrument in 10.4 that's set up similarly to Studio Horns. You can choose individual or group strings and several different articulation settings. Now let's hear both strings and horns in the mix. Another new instrument is the Vintage Mellotron. Mellotron is an instrument that became popular in the 60s and the 70s, particularly because of its use on recordings from the Beatles, Moody Blues, King Crimson, and early Genesis. Mellotron is a tape playback instrument. It's really the world's first example of a functional analog sampler, and it gives you two different sounds to choose from, and you can blend between the two. 
You can also adjust the tape playback speed and tone controls to affect the overall tone of the instrument. Let's give this a listen in the mix. Now let's try blending the Mellotron with studio strings set to violins for a bit more expression. RetroSynth has also been updated a bit. RetroSynth has been around since 10.0, but they've added 18 filter modules in 10.4 as opposed to the 8 modules it had before. So it's just a minor update, but it's worth mentioning. Alright, next let's talk about some new and updated plugins. Space Designer now has a new scalable interface. It's basically the same Space Designer plugin, just with a new look. However, there is a new reverb plugin called Chromaverb. You can choose several different spaces from the top here, and from the looks of it, from the plugin presets, Chromaverb seems to be oriented towards synthesizers and electronic music, which makes sense since Space Designer is all about emulating real acoustic spaces rather than synthetic ones. Let's give this a listen with the dry signal all the way down, and I'll toggle through a few of the different spaces. Now let's try Chromaverb on our horns and strings. Next up, there are two new multi-effects plugins in Logic 10.4. The first one I want to show you is the Fat Effects plugin. Essentially, this is a plugin with several different modules in it aimed at fattening instruments, and you can reorder the modules as well. I'm using this on my bass to give it some bite and drive. The second new multi-effects plugin is called Step Effects. This thing is really awesome. It's basically a step sequencer, but for audio. So I've got some simple Mellotron chords here. And after putting them through Step Effects, And now in the mix. There's also three new vintage EQ plugins in 10.4. This is probably my favorite update. The first is a vintage console EQ, which is an emulation of a Neve EQ. I'm using this on the master bus.
The second is a vintage graphic EQ, which is an emulation of an API EQ. I'm using this on the drums for some added punch. And the third is a vintage 2 EQ, which is an emulation of two different Pultec EQs, which I'm using to warm up the guitar. Another minor plugin update is the Direction Mixer. It's got an updated interface, and you can also click this split button to separate the high frequency direction and spread from the lows. In the future, I'd really like to see this split up into three or four frequency bands, so it can be more useful for stereo spread effects for mastering, but this is still a good start. There's also some new content in Logic 10.4. They've added 800 new loops to the loop library. There's a new Visions library for Alchemy that adds 150 new cinematic presets. And there's two new drummers, Austin and Tyrell, that play with roots and pop brush styles. There's also a whole slew of new additional improvements too, too many to cover all of them, but I'll touch on the main ones. The biggest one in my opinion is the ability to undo mixer and plugin changes. So if you adjust a fader or knob, you can now undo this action or redo this action. The trick is that you have to make sure to turn this feature on in your undo history window, otherwise it won't work. You can also now bounce your session as a 32-bit floating point file. If you previously used region-based quantization in the inspector, you can now just right-click on MIDI clips and choose region quantization from here. And a big feature for Melodyne users that Logic 10.4 now supports is ARA, or Audio Random Access. Essentially this means that you don't have to capture your audio recordings into Melodyne anymore. They'll automatically transfer into Melodyne. Unfortunately I wasn't able to play with this last new feature because this computer I did the review on doesn't have Melodyne installed. But I'll have to make an additional video for this in the future. So that's pretty much it. Those are all the major updates in Logic Pro 10.4. I'm really excited to start working with these new plugins and features, and hopefully feature some of them in more detail in future videos. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. You can also follow me on social media and on Patreon if you'd like to support the channel additionally. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.